Hey everyone, the name is Rictor and today we're talking about the caregiving archetype. And you know you're a caregiving type when you say yes to some of these statements. First, I tend to rate other people's emotional well-being above my own. Second, I tend to get very caught up with other people's emotions. Third, I am intuitively infected by other people's moods. I can tell if somebody is upset or if they are happy. It's important to me to make other people happy. I tend to spend a lot of time trying to make other people happy. I tend to get more joy out of helping others than of than on focusing on my other projects. I don't like to compete with other people. I feel a little bit guilty if I win or if I do better than other people. Yeah, these are some of the statements that mark a giving type, a helper, a person that cares and puts other people's well-being before their own. And yeah, this is not necessary. You do not have to put your own well-being before others. But there is a common tendency in your life that you have thought of other people before yourself. You have fed others, cooked for others, helped others, and only secondly thought of what you need what you have to do and what you need to be happy and what you need to be healthy as a person. So there's a tendency of this type to neglect their own needs and uh, there is an issue here in feeling often manipulated by other people. You give to others and then you feel that you do not get anything back in return. You feel used by others and you feel sometimes guilt-tripped into giving other people what they need, giving so much without getting anything back. Often, the caregiving archetype can be divided into two subgroups. First, you have the caregiving types that prioritize the happiness and joy of other people. Often, these people are comedians or people that tend to spread a happy atmosphere around them. People that like to make other people laugh, people that like to cheer people up, people that like to inspire and make people feel outwardly happy and make other people feel part of the group and to establish some kind of group spirit. The other group of caregiver is more like the healer. This kind of archetype focuses on the harmony and the peace of the group and of other people. Their focus is on making other people feel calm and comfortable and relaxed around one another, making people trust one another and supporting one another and feeling safe around other people. So one group tends to inspire, rally and spark happiness and the other tends to spark peace and harmony and support around themselves and other people. So what you'll tell is, yeah, one might focus on more vocal and more direct means to make other people happy, such as smiling towards a person, showing appreciation or making somebody laugh or doing something. But the other kind is a little bit more subtle. The other works a little bit more like a healer, listening to you, giving counsel, giving feedback, giving support more quietly, working behind the scenes to try to find ways to make you feel better. So these are two common groups of healers. Often, however, the result is the same. There is a struggle with setting boundaries, with protecting your own emotions, and with providing accurate and helpful support towards other people. A common issue and a complaint raised against the helper or caregiving type is that they interfere with the business of other people, that they insert themselves in other people's lives, offering help they were never asked to give. A common complaint is, I never asked for your help. Why are you here? Why are you pushing yourself on me? Why are you trying to control me? Why are you trying to interfere with my business? A common problem is, a helper will seek to offer help help that was not asked for and when the helper offers help they were not asked to do they can leave other people feeling incompetent or incapacitated other people sometimes like to do things their own way and to find their own path and to try their own way at doing something and they want to do this before they ask other people for help and so by offering help without being asked to you can risk invalidating other people's feelings and situation you can push and Try to force other people into a corner, making other people feel that you are pushing your mood or your feelings on them. 
and giving something you never they never wanted or would appreciate. A common issue for the helper is the helper can feel often invalidated or unsupported by others. In turn, the helper can feel that they are trying to help and they are trying to be supportive, but that the other person refuses to offer any kind of thanks or refuses to respond to their help in the first place. Often it's not that the helper needs a vocal, direct, literal expression of gratitude or thanks, though that can be very important and very positive, but that the helper appreciates a smile or some kind of positive response for their actions. They do not just want this kind of fake interplay where they insert and push their emotions on other people and where other people are then forced to be happy or grateful even if it didn't help at all, but rather they are looking to resolve the problems of other people. So, the helper can sometimes struggle with the feeling of incompetence of their own, feeling they are unable to help or support or truly make a difference in other people's lives. So, the helper can struggle with sometimes feeling desperate in the st struggles and suffering of other people. They can feel so caught up in other people's bad days and mood swings and suffering that they can become desperate trying to provide a strategy to resolve the disharmony or conflict and to try to make other people feel better. So the helper can struggle with those basic boundaries of your stuff and my stuff, your feelings and my feelings, my right to be sad and your need to deal with it and to accept it and to walk with me while sad or while upset. Often what the healer needs to do, the giver needs to do is develop a base tolerance for suffering and struggles, recognizing that some hardships of life are more difficult to deal with than others, and that sometimes the most important thing is not necessarily to directly, immediately rid the other person of the disharmony, but rather to accept them as they are, with their struggles and with their issues as they have them, and to be able to walk with them and to be patient with them through these mood swings and through these difficult phases. As a helper, you need to kind of provide validation to yourself that you cannot do everything and you cannot fix everyone and you cannot go too far. Another is to focus on the little good you can do, the small good deeds, because often the small good deeds are more important than the big ones. It's not important necessarily that you can completely fix or turn somebody else's lives around, but it is important that you can provide a breathing space for a person who is upset that you can be an ear for people to talk to, and that you can provide small, simple favors that can make other people's lives easier and better. To rather than focus on what you cannot do, to focus on what you can do. For example, Marvel here needs love, and of course, most of all, he needs food. And here, I think it's also important to focus on the right kinds of support, you know. I think as you develop and as you grow and hit higher levels of consciousness, it also comes down to becoming better at recognizing the needs and feelings of other people. Another person might not be upset as you might think they are. They might not be sad as you might think they are. They might not need what you think they need, but rather they might need something else. So another important aspect is learning to recognize what other people do need. Here, I think, an important part is taking a step back, recognizing that helping other people is about helping yourself. I think we have to recognize every human's innate selfishness. There is nothing wrong with having a self, having a personal identity, having personal needs, having personal feelings of your own. What you have to do is recognize what this is I want, what this is it I need. And here I think it's important to recognize that I'm not being sac self-sacrificing, I'm not being a martyr. I'm doing exactly what I want to do based on what I need and because based on what I feel, or at least I'm trying to. A lot of people will forget about themselves as they help other people. And a foolish thing is to convince yourself that you're being purely altruistic with other people. It's not just about them and what they need, but it's also about what you need. We are all human together, so we all share the same space and the same struggles, just different variations of these struggles, just different versions of the same fear, the same anxiety, the same shame and the same anger that any human being can feel or struggle with. Here's where I've also realized that it's important to listen to yourself and to allow help from other people. Something I notice is a lot of helpers refuse to accept help and support from other people. 
In doing so, they incapacitate other people. Other people get the sense, just as you can get a sense of confidence and pride in helping other people, other people might be able to get a sense of pride and accomplishment in helping you. Other people might also need a chance to feel meaningful and important in your life. And if you're denying people that, you're also causing them to feel rejection and disconnection. Other people who try to help and try to support you and try to listen to you and want to hear of you and want and need your vulnerability and openness and humanity might feel put down or unimportant in your life. They might feel that they are purely a drain on your resources, that you are the one that has to constantly be there for them, but that you never let them in, never let them be important, never let them support you. And this is also what can cause a lot of imbalances in relationships, ultimately leading to the relationship falling apart in itself. When you're working on these uneven grounds, as a mentor towards a mentee or a supporter towards somebody who supported, you're also creating the base roles of a victim and you're creating a dy dynamic that is in itself unstable. What you will see is a lot of people out there, yes, really do will, if they give, get a chance, will take a chance to take advantage of your kindness. If you cannot set important boundaries for your own kindness. Other people may seek to seek your resources and to use your resources for their own gains. Some people will be, will have a blind spot to your feelings and your needs, will be somewhat oblivious to your needs and your feelings. And helpers tend to struggle to tell other people about their own feelings. They struggle to remind other people of how they are feeling. They expect other people to be able to do the same thing they do, to read other people and to assess their needs and to assess their feelings personally. So other types, like thinking judging types, can feel partially blind to what you are feeling and they can struggle to intercept and to know what it is you are feeling. So they might think that you are inhumanly, superhumanly kind and that your kindness is something free when it's not. And this is in part our own fault. We impart on other people a feeling that our help is free. That we give it without any cost. That it does not matter to us. And often we assume, we give people the feeling that it was something selfish to begin with. We support other people, but other people will often assume this was a selfish act to begin with. So they will not know when they took something from us or when it costs us energy to do something. And so they will ask us to do it again and again and again, sometimes thinking they are doing us a favor. So what I want you to do as a helper, support figure, or caregiver, is to learn to validate yourself and to learn to share your emotional space with other people, to open up about your feelings and your needs. And here I find something very important. Show other people how they can help you help them. When you're engaged in community activism or when you're trying to help other people or when you're trying to do something for others, let other people know what you need to be effective in your role as a helper. Let them know what it is you need to know about them. Ask them questions. Find out how they're feeling. Find out what they need. Listen to their emotional signals. Become better at assessing their needs. Find out what they really want, not what they say they want, not what uh, you think they want, but what they really need. Learn what emotional strategies work, learn what forms of help are effective and which ones are wasted. Find out when you actually made a difference and find out when you in fact did people a disservice. Notice and listen for gratitude and signals that show that people actually appreciate you for what you do and that your help actually helped. Find out uh, what other people feel and what there is that there is really going on and don't be too quick to assume what it is they feel or what it is they want and constantly hold on to your emotional space as you're helping other people recognizing your own feelings as you help other people recognize how it makes you feel recognize why it is you do what you do remain conscious and remain a positive impact in other people's lives rather than a drain or a crutch so I hope this video can help you as a helper and 
If you did like this video, leave a like and share with other helpers. And yeah, feel free to ask me any questions you want down below in the comments. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next video.